Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to From Zero to Fluent in Arabic for non native Arab step by step guide. What is going on, guys? It's been a few days, about two weeks. We didn't have internet in Mauritania for two weeks. It was very unstable coming back, going. Even right now, I don't even feel safe anymore. It might, it might leave me as I'm recording this video. But inshallah. Today, guys, I want to make this a less than 10 minutes. Let's see if we can achieve this challenge. And I want to explain you guys pretty much in a very simple way. What is the guide? What is the how to start? Where to start from? Uh, in order for you to become fluent in Arabic, and in order for you to just do your first steps into, into the language. So let's get into it. Now, first of all, guys, let's talk about the non-to-dos and the not-to-dos. Because, you know, we can talk about the to-dos, but if you don't know the not-to-dos, then you cannot protect yourself from This is why it's always good to know the bad, so you can get protected from it. So, first of all, a lot of people out there, they start learning by... Or, or learn the grammar and the morphology instead of starting with vocabulary. Then as well, they learn from teachers who teach them in their language, whether it's English, whether it's another language. Uh, learning from a teacher that has a very broken accent, broken foreign accent. Like, for example, a brother who, um, you know, goes to study uh, Arabic and after a year he's teaching you know, books in al ajurumiya might, might be in English, might be in Arabic, but very broken to the point where the student can't even really benefit from the, from the, from the actual, you know, uh, fasaha and the actual eloquency that Arabic has. I uh, learned from different teachers as well at the same time. This will make you go crazy. It's like learning different books and different opinions and reading a lot of books at the same time. So... The last one is learning on, on your own through videos with no feedback. Like, for example, going on YouTube. Oh, no, I'm just going to take, I'm just, I'm not going to pay for anything, man. Knowledge is free. I'm just going to go online and, and go over these videos, which, you know, you could benefit from it. But the thing is that you need that little feedback. You need that little, that little, and that little uh, connection with someone who's guiding you. And, uh, you know, Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah, he even said uh, in, uh, in his known few lines of poetry, Ya akhi la tanala al-ilma illa bi sittatin, sa'un bika an tafsiliha bi bayanin, dhaka'un wa hirsun wa shidhaadun wa bulgatun, wa suhbatu ustaz, wa suhbatu ustaadin wa tulu zaman. So, Imam Shafi'i, he says that, uh, that there is three, six things that you need to have in order for you to seek knowledge. And one of them, to not waste time, one of them, he says, Suhbatu Ustad. Suhbatu Ustad, which is being with a teacher constantly and having, you know, a lot of time and, uh, and the other ones that, that he has mentioned. If you guys want to know the other ones, just let me know in the comments, inshallah, and I will write them for you. However, all of this is khata. Is You shouldn't f do any of these that we just mentioned. However, let's talk about the ones that you actually need to do. So start by building your vocabulary only from 2,000 to 5,000 words. That will actually help a lot. Not only will it make the learning Arabic easy, but what's difficult in the Arabic language, you will make it easier as well, just because you have a lot of vocabulary and you understand. Now, as well, learn Arabic in Arabic, only avoid Arab English translations. This is a big thing that my teachers always used to tell me. And when I say teachers, I say teacher because I pretty much just had one real, you know, teacher uh, for the Arabic language, except for, you know, studies at university. However, um, learning in Arabic only and using the actual Arabic dictionary, that makes you, that puts you, you know, in another level than the person who is constantly translating. And to the point where when he's about to speak, he first translates from his language into Arabic in his head and then he talks which makes him slower, which makes him less fluent. So, I mean, it only makes sense. Uh, learn from a teacher with a clear pronunciation when speaking as well. So, it's important that you learn from someone who, you know, doesn't have to be Arab, but at least sound Arab. And... And don't get me wrong, even some Arabs, they don't sound Arab. Okay, I remember when we were in Al-Azhar, uh, 
our teachers, they used to teach us in Amiya. This is why I say my teachers, and I said, well, you know, yeah, I had teachers in, in university, but it's not really, you don't really benefit from them. You really benefit from the one that you see every day, that you have a really close relation with them and actually knows Arabic. It's not just the professor at university for this field. Because they used to teach us in Amiya. You know, you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't study from, from, these, uh, from these teachers. Um, I don't know why I'm wearing this. But khair, inshallah. Um, again, pick one teacher and one method and don't change it. All methods really work. Okay? And, and remember that the, the, the grass is not greener on the other side, but it's greener where you, where you water it. And it's many times, um, the, you know, this scenario happens where <clears throat> a brother or a sister might start studying Arabic. And then he starts studying Arabic at the same time with another brother or sister who's close from him. Then he sees that the other brother or sister is a little bit more advanced or knows things or asking questions in purpose so he can feel like, oh, I didn't study that. And, um, and what happens is that then the person who's doing this method, then he sees that person who's a little bit more advanced. And then he says, maybe it's my method that's not working. Maybe it's my teacher. Oh, I don't like my teacher. Last time he coughed while I was talking to him and he didn't ask me why. And next thing you know, you just you just jumping from flower to flower, from book from to book, and you never finish the book, and you never finish studying from that teacher. Anyways, let's make this quick. Free recorded lessons are fine, but you need feedback as you are learning on what you are learning as well. Taib, so it's good to if you have a teacher, for example, or the way how we do it in Arabic, like like an Arab. Yeah, you do take the pre recorded lessons. However, we do follow up with you. And make sure that you are actually understanding what's being, what's being taught. And as well, you are able to ask the questions. You are able to, to call the teacher. Okay, yeah, I didn't understand what you said in this place. But most of it is really pretty much self-explanatory. However, you need really what Al-Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah said uh, in, his, in his poetry. وَصُحْبَةُ أُسْتَاذٍ You need to be close from a teacher that can actually guide you. Okay, moving forward, all of this is what someone should do and what someone should focus on. And obviously, this is my opinion. I didn't take it from any books. It's just from experience. And I speak five languages, so I think that I can actually have an opinion when it comes to learning a language. And I don't, I'm not, I was actually watching a video not long ago on YouTube. It said, polyglot who speaks 22 languages, uh, why polyglot learns Arabic, speaks Arabic. And I was listening to how he was speaking Arabic, and I don't think is befitting to say that you're polyglot if you are not fluent in all the languages you speak. So when I say I'm a polyglot and speak five languages, I, I'm actually, like English is a learned language and I'm speaking to you guys in English. Khaira inshallah, moving forward. Once we know all of this, now we need to jump into the how. Because it's really, it might sound very simple. Yeah, just start memorizing vocabulary, but it's like, oh, okay, how? So you might be in this situation right here. This brother is Al-Akh Hanan, may Allah bless him and put barakah in his studies. He's been one of uh, our best students in, uh, in, in, in the program Arabic like an Arab. And he was in the same situation. So I want you guys to hear from him what he has to say when he was actually looking for a way on how to look for this vocabulary, how to start, you know, this vocabulary journey. So you joined Anders Institute. Explain us a little bit what it was before. What did you go over? What books? Because a lot of people, they, they start from zero, but other, most of the people, most of the students, they actually have already tried out a few books or a few uh, other methods and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, when I first joined, I had started. I had already studied the three Medina books mm -hmm. online with a teacher on YouTube. So I was watching the series. I was going through the books, taking notes, doing the exercises on my own. And uh, I was seeking like some advice from my teachers, and he's like, at this point, all you need is vocab. So I'm like, all right, how, how am I gonna get vocab? <laughs> and all of a sudden, this came along under this institute. All right, guys. So it's easy to just go over books and oh yeah, I studied this book and that book and this book. But if you don't have, you can study the book and actually end up with not even benefiting because you just focusing on the technicalities of what the book is teaching you and what is a fa'a and what is a maf'ul and what is a maf'ul. We have seen actually brothers who don't know how to maintain a conversation. They don't know how to tell me in Arabic what books they have studied. They don't know how to maintain a conversation in Arabic. However, they know what a maf'ul bihi is and what a, what a fa'il and na'ibul fa'il. And it's like, how, why would you even know that? 
yet and you can't even use it because you don't have enough vocabulary okay guys so this is very important how to start learning the arabic vocabulary and gaining vocabulary is the easiest thing when learning arabic and not only is the easiest thing as we said but it actually makes easy what is hard in the arabic language knowing vocabulary a lot of vocabulary makes easy what is hard and this is why you see some uh you know some some Arab, native Arab students, when they start learning their Arabic language, they go straight away into al-ajrumiyya. They go straight away into grammar. Because they already have, they already know vocabulary. Because even though um, Arabs are from, uh, like nowadays Arabs, they, don't, they might not be able to speak classical Arabic, but a lot of their dialect words are just taken from, from classical Arabic. So it's really easy for them to go into the grammar because they already understand pretty much. They understand, but they might not be able to communicate with a classical Arabic. طيب خيرا إنشاء الله. So you are going to learn right now in less than 10 minutes, guys, how to learn Arabic and how to start building your, your mental dictionary of Arabic. طيب. So let's get into this. And this is the way, guys. The way is starting with reading simple conversational texts that are very simple to understand and start struct extracting that vocabulary. So you start reading ذهب محمد إلى المسجد في الصباح والتقى بصديقه عمر فكان مسرورا. And now what we do, we start extracting one by one. And you might think, okay, but how do we extract? Like what? Like do I just memorize what it means? Do I actually do it in a way? So look, guys, this right here, if you if you follow this way, it can like there is I have not I've never seen someone who followed this way and having accomplished what he was looking to accomplish in the Arabic language. So this is what we call in Arabic like an Arab kitabu at tabyid, which could be translated to the blank book. طيب, where we put all our words that we that we memorize and that we learn. So here, right, we're here starting from the from the top right. We have al-Maldi, which is the past tense, al-Harf, which is the article, al-Mudari, which is the present tense, al-Amr, which is the command or the request. Do this. Then we have al-Masdar, which is the name. Some say is is the verb is taken from the Masdar, and some say that the Masdar is taken from the from the verb. طيب. And we have al-fa'il, which is the one that does the action. And we have al-maf'ul, which is al-ladhi waqa'a alayhi al-fil, is the one that the action is being done upon. طيب. So, for example, we have dhahaba, which means to go. Dhahaba wal-harfu ila. And the article is ila. طيب. And the article is important that we have it here as well. Because the article will change Many times, a matter of fact is that the article, depending on the article, the sentence might mean something or might mean something else. And this is why, for those who have studied al jurumiyah who are watching this, uh, you will see that Ibn al-Jurum, when he talks about aqsam al-kalam, he says fi'lun wa harfun, uh, fi'lun wa ismun wa harfun ja'a li ma'na. Wa harfun ja'a li ma'na. Meaning that the harf gives the ma'na in the in the actual sentence. So it's important that we have the harf, the article, and depending on the article, something might mean something, something will make uh, or mean something or something else. So we have dhahaba, he went, yadhabu, he goes, idhab, and it's the amr, meaning go, adhahabu, right here, dhahabu, which is, uh, you know, the action of going, adhahib, who's the, the person that's going, the person that's doing the, act, the actual action, and then we have al-madhub, the madhub ila, meaning the thing that is gone to. طيب, so, so in this case, in this case, and guys, you know, I don't want from this video that you that you say, oh my God, this is so this, this is so difficult. I'm just showing you the, you know, the actual plan, the actual strategy. The strategy, when an architect shows you the strategy of a plan, he always looks difficult until he builds the building and you say oh mashallah it was actually it was actually simple طيب, so so the way why we want to do it like this okay the way why we if we prepare ourselves and we have a good foundation we start learning a good way instead of you just you know building your your vocabulary in a notebook writing uh bait means house yara means means uh you know uh a car and and 
instead of doing it like this on a dirt in a, in, a, in a dirty way in not organized way you want to do it this way so you can actually go back to it and you can revise it طيب and this one this was one of the advices that al-imam al-bukhari rahimahullah said or gave when when they asked him on how to retain knowledge he said by way of storing the knowledge and by way of tikrar by way of repeating that knowledge so you actually want to have it so you can actually go back to it so dhahaba yadhhabu idhhab dhahabun dhahibun madhub and the good the good thing about this as well about this method is that in a method, in a melodical word, a method it will be so easy to just keep memorizing words and words and words and words and for those who have a little bit of experience with memorizing quran you know that when you start memorizing quran half a page is very hard then one page starts to become a little bit more like you know easier then once you pass kaf surat kaf if you start from nas you you see yourself memorizing two pages three pages four pages and that's because the memory muscle is already developed طيب, so you go and you will see that as you go and you learn in different verbs and you keep reading simple text and you keep extracting the words you will see that everything sounds the same so it makes it so if it makes it so easy and you will see that oh subhanallah this is actually so easy once you find a new word you already know what was gonna what's the melody gonna be and and it makes it so easy so easy for your brain to memorize new vocabulary so look and then so it makes it so easy so this is why right now it sounds like difficult oh my god there's a lot of words but once you get the pattern once you get the your brain gets used to it memorizing vocabulary is just it's just a matter of you know of doing it it's just a matter of 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 giving me giving give me more vocabulary because I already have the the pattern in my head. طيب خيرا. So now what we want to do is keep extracting the vocabulary as we are reading from conversational easy texts. So we take Muhammadun is the next word that we don't know, right? Because in this text we starting from zero, we don't know anything. طيب. So we so we take Muhammad and we put it into Kitab al-Tabid but for the kalimat from the for the nouns. So طيب and we have only three Collins. We have al-mufrad, which is the, the singular, al-jama', which is the plural, wal ma'na, which is the meaning. And we could give more, but khayra, inshallah, we keep it simple. So Muhammad, Muhammaduna, that's the jama'. Ja'a al-Muhammaduna. Ja'a al-Muhammadun, the, 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 the Muhammadun came. Those, the group of men who all of them's name Muhammad. Tayyib, khayra, inshallah. Now we take ila. Ila is an article, and we took it for dhahaba. <coughs> and as we said, many verbs. They always come with an, with an article. So two, two words. Okay, that's one of the meanings for ila. Then we, get, we take al-masjid. Masjid is a mosque, known. You might even use it and you don't know Arabic yet. And the fact is, actually, you actually know Arabic already because you use masjid. You know, I'm going to the masjid. I'm, I'm going to the masjid. Or they say uh, in the U.S., I'm going to the, to the masjid, to the masjid or something. I can't remember. But khaira, inshallah. You have masjid masajidu. That's the jam'ah, that's the plural, and you memorize it. And then you go fi, okay, that's an article. From its meanings, in. And this, in this context, it means in. Then you have sabah, which means morning. Jameel. Then you have wa, which means end. Then you have iltaqa, which, which if you take it back to the pattern, just listen. Then you hear iltaqa, 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 iltaqa. Then another verb that sounds a little bit the same is going to come, like, like, and then you have uh, and all sounds the same so as long as you take the madi you know the rest what is going to be already you know the rest what is going to be already so by learning one word you're actually learning six seven more or by learning one word you actually know already seven more طيب. then you take b which is an, an actual article as well in this meaning it would be it would mean with and from its meanings because you know with a meaning or with another in a context or another it might mean something it might mean something else then as sadiqu and the jamu is as which means friend and then the ha this little thing that you see at the end of the word that's a damir and we call them damirun muttasil damirun muttasil a connected damir and a damir could be in english a pronoun طيب. 
And it means بمعنى هو بمعنى هو بمعنى him And it could come in a way of هو Or it could come in a way of who Or it could come in a way of he طيب And depending on what comes before It might, it might be he or it might be who طيب But it means he And then we have عمر Which is a name as well جمعوا معرونا Then فاء Which is a حرف Which is an article And in this case it might be something as so then kana, which is a fair, let's well, a, a verb. Kana yakunu kun kaunun kainun. And it means to be. And as well, you can find it in the Quran. Inama amruhu ida arada shayna yakun lahu kun fayakun. Kun fayakun. Tayyib. And then you have masroor, which means happy. Tayyib. And the jam'u is masroorona. So now we take in all of these verbs, right? And you need to remember that. Learning Arabic is only about memorization. So as long as you are doing these, you know, as long as you are following this method and you keep reading verbs, I mean, you can, you can read in text, very simple text, and you keep extracting the vocabulary from baby, baby level all the way to Sheikh Ibn Islam, you know, uh, you start reading books like Ibn Al-Qayyim, etc., etc. As long as you keep doing this, and you get to the point of having in between 2,000 to 5,000 pieces of vocabulary, there is no other than actually knowing as much as a native person, a native Arab would know. So remember that learning Arabic is about memorization. I'm not going to come here and make it seem as it's easy. No, you just go over there. No, you actually need to memorize. This is like memorizing the whole Quran. Obviously, it's, it's a little bit... Uh, you know, a little bit more difficult because the Quran is made, is made easy for you to memorize. But if you follow this melodical way, it will be as simple, inshallah, with the tawfiq of Allah for you than memorizing the Quran. And if you learn Arabic and you have all of this vocabulary, you will find all of this vocabulary in the Quran, which, which will make it even easier for you to memorize. If you actually have, you know, high aspirations like this. Now, and this might seem... A lot to memorize right now, but it's actually not that much. It's actually not that much. And as I said, with this method of, of organizing everything, it makes it so easy to just keep bringing more vocabulary, more, 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 and more. And once you know it, you know it. The thing is that that's the, that's the, you know, the interesting thing and, the, and the, the encouraging thing is that I show you guys the a text in the beginning. You guys didn't know anything. Now, if you sit for the next hour and you go over the, all the vocabulary that we took, the next, uh, ver the next text that you find, like this text that you have in front of you, I have, uh, you know, in, on purpose, put some of the words that we have already learned. And now see all of the greetings, what you should already know, what sh you should already know. And the rest is what you don't know. Now, if you do the process that we did for the past text with this, the next text that you will see all of these words, you will already know them as well. So you will understand a 60 to a 90% of it already. So you know Il Taqa, you know Umar, you know Fi, Al Sabah, Kana, Fi. So take this example. Okay, the students in Arabic, like an Arab, when they start this, the first class, the first class, class they find these three texts and we extract all of this vocabulary and they don't know any of these words. طيب. Like, basically we extract all the vocabulary. طيب. And I'm sure, you know, just being as Muslim, many things you already know, like, Assalamu Alaikum, uh, you know, Ana, Kaifa, you know, many, many students, they might already know a few words of this. But what I, the point that I'm trying to make is that, look, the last, the last lesson, look how many words they don't know. Look at the red highlighted words. These are the words the students don't know. So the rest of it, they know it, which is pretty much 85% of it. So they understand the whole, the whole context just by, you know, the past 40-something lessons and, and because they have been building their vocabulary. So, you know, if they, if they read, for example, قَالَتْ نَعَمْ فَأَمَرَ مِنْ وَقْتِهِ بدابته وأسرجت وقام خزيمته ومن معه فلقي إكرمته في قاعدة. All of these they have already, all of these words they have already taken them. 
So it makes it, it's just a process, you know, it's just by, and this is the process, and this is how you start. And if not, if you don't have all of this vocabulary, then how are you going to understand the grammar? Because the grammar is pretty much the same, it's just an Arabic text, and you have to have all of this vocabulary. And just by looking at this text, if you see Bab, obviously Bab, we're gonna, you know, we, you're already taking this as being, once you reach the last lesson, Af'al, you take it, Al Musannif, you take it, Af'al, Thalatha, Madi, Mudari, Amr, all of Nahu, Sharh, Yanqasim, Al Fi'al, Ila, Mad, all of this you have already taken. Tayyib, and it's actually, you know, I actually want to show you guys what the students say. When when they pass from the from the actual from the actual vocabulary lessons, which is actually a lot of of uh, of in in there already, but in in a simplified way. But I want to show you guys what do they say once they are learning grammar already. Realizing, starting to understand the importance of learning the vocab of a specific field before going into it. Since we have learned enough vocab for Nahu, and in general, I'm able to read Uthaymin's Sharh without ever having to look up a word. Subhanallah. I'm realizing even more why we focus on vocab conversation first. Taib khair, inshallah. So this is why we need to build our vocabulary. And right now, guys, before we finish, we are already done. But I want to offer you guys this book, which I prepared. And, you know, it took me a few months uh, in 2019 to put together. But alhamdulillah, right now is almost about to be updated. And we are almost about to have version two of Arabic like an Arab. So before all of this closes, before all of this closes, uh, I want to offer you guys this. And you guys will find the link in the description below to get this book. You know, you can get it for free. It's, no, it's, no, it's free of charge. And as well, you can actually have a training, a more in-detail training. Um, and, and, you know, more explained, in a more explained way, what we just spoke about. And at the end, if you are ready to start, because this is definitely not for everyone, is not made for everyone to join if you are ready to start at the end i'm going to explain you what we have going on in arabic like an arab how it works what is it about what you're going to learn what you're going to get at the end and and how fluent can you become and all the resources that we that we provide to it and subhanallah you know we as me and my team we put all our sweat and tears into it so you will be very surprised most of the students who go over and see how I have set it up, etc. They are very surprised. So inshallah, I highly recommend you to go and check it out. And, uh, and remember to take the book at the end. If you stay until the end, you can actually get the book as well. And all of this is for free. Obviously the program, if you are serious about it and you actually want to join, it's not for free, it's a paid program. However, I can promise you, I can promise you that if you follow it, you're going to get, inshallah, if you're serious about learning the Arabic language, you're going to get your objective, inshallah. And uh, guys, I hope you liked it, this kind of videos. I got it ready whilst I didn't have internet here in Mauritania. So I hope you guys appreciate the, the effort and I hope you guys benefited as well. And uh, for those who already have started learning Arabic, I hope it's refreshing. And if you are doing some of the not to do's that we spoke about in the beginning, make sure you stop doing those and you actually start doing it the right way uh, and let me guys know in the comments what you guys thought and remember for those who are interested the link is going to be in the description of this video for you to get the book and for you to get the free training and actually know about the arabic like an arab program if you are serious about it طيب والسلام عليكم اسبني ابراهيم محمد الاندلسي والصلاة يا صاحبي رفعة بدنيا وأخرى فلذ بالقلم وأخلص لربك وأعمل بما علمت وإن تلقى فيه الألم وصابر وذابر ولا تكسلا فإن الهموم بقدر الهمم فإن الهموم بقدر الهمم